Retconning a character's sexuality produces a ton of, let's just say, emotional reactions, both positive and negative. But there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. This is mostly an overview of Tim Drake, aka Robin, Red Robin, Drake, and sometimes Batman from DC, and his history of queerness in the comics. Hi all, my name is Ryan, and welcome to my channel, What The Pop, where we discuss pop culture in general, and Buffy a lot. And lately, a few things queer. Recently, in the pages of Batman Urban Legends, it has been revealed that Tim Drake, the third Robin, now sometimes Red Robin, is a member of the LGBTQI family, being bisexual, or at least dating boys and girls. Now this is seen as controversial by some in retconning a previously straight character, to being gay or bi, but I'm going to explain why I feel this is a natural progression for Tim Drake, and why I wasn't surprised at all that DC made this particular character uh, queer. Now let me say it up front, I don't agree with them retconning a character's sexuality where there is no evidence of that sexuality. Specifically, characters like Bobby Drake, aka Iceman from the X-Men. His retcon to coming out was so badly done, and done on a character that has had no history of queer coding. But I don't think that's the case here. First, let's look at a couple of terms, because they're important when looking at the history of characters who, uh, who have their sexuality retconned. There are three terms that are important. Queer, queer reading, and queer coding. Queer is fairly simple, it's obviously when a character is directly referred to as being a member of the LGBTQI family. So as of Batman Urban Legends number 6, Tim Drake is canonically queer in the main DC universe. It is now part of the normal story that Tim dates guys and girls, and has been explicitly stated and shown in the main continuity of the comics. So it's not a version of the character from another multiverse dimension. A queer reading is a way of looking at a story through a queer lens and applying a queer perspective. This can result in characters being read as queer who were never canonically declared as such. So Tim and Connor's relationship is often looked at as queer through a queer reading. Queer coding is when a character has intentionally been given gay traits to be read as gay or bi uh, without actually saying it directly, or a relationship is intentionally written as ambiguous with enough hints that it is meant to be read as gay. Queer coding will therefore inform a queer reading. There is another term, queer baiting, but it doesn't apply in this situation, so I'm not going to talk about it. Now, it's important to highlight that you are often dealing with history that delves back into times when it was against the Comic Code Authority to depict queer characters. So queer coding and reading was all there was. And this is all a hangover from the 1950s. In the 1950s, Frederick Wortham, a German psychiatrist at the time, published a book, Seduction of the Innocent, that basically said that comics were a bad influence on America's youth. And particularly egregious was the claim that they were luring them into homosexuality. Unfortunately, Wortham was well respected at the time, so his book caused a moral panic. Kids turning homosexual was the worst thing that could happen to good Christian people, so comics received a lot of backlash, and comics themselves scrambled to erase any form of queerness from their pages, and continue to do so for decades through the Comics Code Authority. It should be noted that in her 2012 paper, Seducing the Innocent, Frederick Wortham and the Falsifications that Helped Condemn Comics, published in Volume 7 of, uh, 47 of Information and Culture, Carol Tilly found that Wortham manipulated, overstated, compromised and fabricated evidence for his books. In other words, it was a hit job on comics. Batman suffered especially from this book, with issues deriving from a queer reading. Wortham was particularly concerned with the gay subtext of Batman and Robin, uh, Robin, saying it was a wish dream of two homosexuals living together. Hardly scandalous now, but in the 50s that was outrageous. To combat these claims, DC introduced the original Batwoman as a girlfriend to Bruce, and Batgirl as a girlfriend to Robin, saying, look, no homo. But Dick Grayson, the original Robin, was particularly still being read as queer, 
and it plagued the character for some time to the point that they overcompensated and made him somewhat of a man whore, a serial womanizer like Bruce Wayne, even once he had donned the Nightwing mantle. But a queer reading is something that all subsequent Robins, even Stephanie Brown, a female Robin, have encountered as well, usually with their best friend, Jason Todd and Roy Harper, aka Arsenal, Tim Drake and Connor Kent, aka Superboy, even Damian Wayne and Jonathan Kent, aka Superboy Mark II. So there is obviously something about Robin that LGBTQI people identify with, but none have been more surrounded by queer reading than Tim Drake. Tim Drake is Batman's third Robin after Dick Grayson became Nightwing and Jason Todd apparently died at the hands of the Joker. Tim is actually my favourite Robin, though I prefer him as Red Robin. I never found Dick Grayson particularly interesting until he became Nightwing. And Jason Todd was just so angry that everyone hated him at the time and he was killed by phone pole. And Damien, well, when Damien was first introduced, I just found him utterly annoying, even more so than Jason Todd but he's grown on me depending on who is writing him. Tim Drake made his first, uh, first appearance in Batman 436 in 1989, so he's been around for about three decades. He had three successful miniseries before being the first Robin to get a full comic run, which ran from 1993 to 2009. And in those three decades, he has had a number of girlfriends, most notably with Stephanie Brown. Can we just mention how wacky the ages are of Batman's sidekicks? In my headcanon, Batman is around my, my age, and as I'm writing this, it's my 44th birthday. I see Dick Grayson now is late 20s, Jason Todd is mid 20s, and Tim Drake at around 20, with Damian Wayne's age being anywhere from 10 to 15, depending on who is writing and drawing him. But that is not their apparent ages. Apparently, Nightwing is 24 ish, Jason is around 19, Tim is 17, and Damian is like 11. Now, I bring this up for one reason. Everything that Tim has gone through, all the events that we've seen in the comics, and all his relationships have therefore been over a period of four years, because he debuted at 13. Now, there are some reboots and various timeline events going on in that period, so the timeline gets wildly inconsistent. But the important thing to realise is that Tim is still very much a teenager, someone who is still on that journey to adulthood and discovering who they are. And that brings us to the plot of Tim Drake's story in Batman Urban Legends. It's called Some of Our Parts, it's written by Megan Fitzmartin and drawn by Blen Ortega. While it has a subplot of kids being kidnapped and sacrificed, the main plot is Tim questioning who he is if he's not Robin. It's an interesting plot to use for two reasons. Uh, one, it builds off a lot of comic lore of Tim really trying to find himself and is the major premise for the story. And secondly, it's just how so much fanfic starts uh, when depicting his queer relationship. And this leads to him agreeing to a date with Bernard. Now, Bernard is not a new character. He has appeared before in the Robin comics. So he and Tim already have history, which I'll talk about later. On the actual story itself, it was okay. Being a short story in an anthology, it doesn't have the space to really flesh out the story and provide it with the depth it required. Either Tim's exploration of who he is or the kids being kidnapped and sacrificed subplot. As such, it's only notable really for Tim's coming out, rather than for anything else around it. The antagonists were particularly interesting or engaging, and being a short story, there seemed to be story elements just, well, missing, to rush through to the conclusion. Of note was that Bernard had reportedly had bruises and welts on his arms and legs, and they turned out to be from martial arts training. So, one of the best pages in the comic was Tim and Bernard standing back to back, fighting. While all the Robins and their best friends can be subject to a queer reading, and assumptions of sexuality can be made on that, I think Tim Drake is the only one of the Robins, particularly with his relationship with Connor, that is explicitly queer coded. In other words, I think writers have gone out of their way to ensure that Tim Drake and Connor can be read as queer. Following are a few examples, but there are many more. For example, in 2003, in Titans, Titans Young Justice Graduation Day Issue 2, written by Judd Winnick, who created the Jason Todd Red Hood persona, we are shown Tim and Connor literally in a closet together, and Tim is chastising Connor for stupidly attacking the murder android Indigo while Connor is getting dressed. 
and Tim comes across as a boyfriend whose lover just did something that almost got himself killed rather than a concerned teammate. In 2018, someone asked Judd why they were in a closet and Judd replied, I saw this as an opportunity for them to both come out of the closet. Hashtag live your best life. So this one is clearly an example of queer coding where the writer intended a gay reading of the relationship. After Superboy was killed in the Infinite Crisis storyline, uh, Robin tried unsuccessfully to clone him 99 times. He is so emotionally wrecked that he says to Cassie that he just wanted him back that a clone will be as close as he can get, and he misses him so much. He then goes on to try the Lazarus Pit to resurrect him, and also asks Raven if she can do it. He is obsessed. When Superboy does eventually come back, we get this panel. Tim says nothing, he just hugs him. Tim then says he's in a good place now, and Connor asks, you found something. Well, yes, Connor, he found out the man he loves, the man he tried to clone, the man he tried to resurrect, is alive again. So yes, he found something. After Connor says he'll see him later, uh, and, Tim, and Connor leaves, Tim says to himself, this right here, this moment, this is good. I'm going to live in this moment just for a while. In Adventure Comics number three, he has this moment with Connor talking about him being dead, and Tim says he tried to clone him but failed. Connor says, even, it had, even if it had worked, it wouldn't have been me. And Tim replies, and I know that. I know it wouldn't have been you, Connor, but, and he pauses, but it would have been something. In DC Rebirth, when Connor doesn't even exist, a future Tim tells younger Tim to reconcile with Connor. But of course, Tim doesn't know who that is. And he says, He talked about a friend I should have, someone named Connor. And I felt that name tugging at my heart, and I don't know why. Now I'm going to say something else as well on Tim and Connor. Tim Drake may well be bisexual, but the queer coding between Tim and Connor wasn't all one way. Here's just a couple of instances where Connor is queer coded as well. These aren't the only ones, but they're what I could remember off the top of my head. I thought I'd throw them in so that when Connor tells Tim he loves him in the future and Tim Con becomes a reality, uh, just they're not forcing something that was never there. Tim Con has been there for two decades now. In Teen Titans number one, Connor says to Tim, We came here because we're friends, right? You've got to give me a reason to stick around, Robin. And there's an awkward silence in the next panel. Nothing is said. Then Tim replies in the panel after, Friends. You're smarter than you look. And Connor replies, I know. The subtext in that conversation, when I first read it, I was just, Christ him. Connor is literally asking you to tell him that you love him. Then there's this cute one. After Connor has returned and Damian Wayne is now Robin, and Connor says to Tim while back to back in a fight, protecting his man, Still refuse to call him by your name. I don't care what costume you or him wears. As far as I'm concerned, you're my Robin. Always will be. And Tim replies, and you'll always be my clone boy. This is just a few examples of the queer coding between the two. There are quite a few others. On Tim Con though, there's this panel of Tim in bed wearing Connor's shirt and Connor coming in to crash. Okay, now I'm pretty sure this is fan art, or it happened in a comic I just haven't read, or I just can't remember it. But TimCon is so interwoven into the comic now, that it's one of those things where you wouldn't even blink if you saw this exact panel in a comic. You'd think that's just how they are. But it's not just Connor. After it came out that Tim was going on a date with Bernard, I went back over my Robin comics and re-examined their first interactions to see if, the, uh, if there was something there between them. Because I remember, it, I remember there being something, but I couldn't remember how queer-coded it was. And in the first interaction in Robin 121, Bernard is basically giving Tim a head-to-toe assessment and clearly likes what he sees. He refers to his eyes, so clearly looked into them, says he bathes often, so clearly smelled him, and while walking around behind him, he says he's ripped. He threatens to spank him if he calls him Bernie, and then puts his arm around his shoulders as they walk off to class. Now, I don't know how anything queer could be read into that. In issue 122, we get this line from Tim. And then Bernard threatened to sneak into my room some night and bind and gag me and sell me to Bolivian organ pirates. I think I'm going to like Bernard. He's going to like him for binding and gagging him. I think Tim likes a little bit of kink. 
Of course, he dresses up in leather. Leather, of course, he likes kink. In issue 123, we get this exchange after Bernard asks Tim about the girlfriend he's never seen. Bernard says, If you've got something to tell me, then speak up. We're buds. I'll understand. We're two modern enlightened men in the third millennium, Drake. No need to make up imaginary girlfriends. In issue 124, an issue where Tim's parents pose the question of whether he's still a virgin, while talking to his then-girlfriend Stephanie, she asks about making out, to which Tim says he's not in the mood, and Stephanie replies, Tim, oh thou object of my current idolatry, if I waited for when you were in the mood, I'd have less human contact than an agoraphobic in a one-monk monastery. In other words, he's got this attractive, kick-ass girlfriend who he barely touches unless she initiates their interactions. And if my memory serves me correct, Tim Drake is still a virgin. He hasn't punched his V-card yet, despite having multiple hot women throw themselves at him constantly. And I think that's fairly telling in itself. Now, the issue with queer coding is that it becomes inconsistent depending on the writer. One writer may lean heavily into the queer coding and make it fairly obvious in its depiction. Another may only hint at it or leave it completely ambiguous. And other, writing, other writers may not use it at all. So what that means for characters that are queer coded, especially ones like Tim Drake, who have been around for 30 years, is that for every moment that you can point at that is clearly queer coded, you can point at another where they're clearly not. But there does seem to be a long history of queer coding of Tim. And as we saw from the examples above, and the quote from Judd Winnick previously, there's also this from Freddie Williams, who illustrated the Robin Solo comic from 2006 to 2008. Wow, I drew a lot of Tim back 2006-2008. The writers and I spoke openly about Tim's bisexuality, to each other and on panels at cons. I feel silly to admit this, but I just assumed it was already canon. So DC for quite a while, it seems, has clearly been queer coding Tim intentionally. So the announcement of him dating a boy is no real surprise to me, and shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone who read Robin in the 2000s, as well as Teen Titans and Young Justice. That love for Connor has been there on the page for quite some time. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video, or consider supporting the page through our Patreon. If you think I missed anything, or have any comments, put them in the comments below, and I'll see you next video.